What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about the energy consumption of Bitcoin and whether or not it's a problem for the long-term global adoption of the cryptocurrency. Now, as a Tesla shareholder and tree hugger and someone who advocated for them to buy Bitcoin, this is a criticism I get met with a lot, which is how can you be an advocate for sustainability, but also own Bitcoin whose network causes a massive amount of pollution? So I believe this is a very complex issue. And Bitcoin, um, the people that think it's polluting too much to be used as a global currency are falling victim to the stagnation fallacy and not looking at the underlying data on the blockchain that shows that Bitcoin is getting vastly more efficient per dollar moved on the network and getting uh, the pace of getting more efficient is vastly superior to any method of value transfer or money in the world. So in this video, I'm going to make the argument that Bitcoin's energy consumption is not a problem. The pollution is plateauing and the pollution in the long term will actually decrease of the Bitcoin network. So this is the chart that really sold me on it. This is the Bitcoin energy consumption index chart. So this shows that the estimated terawatt hours of energy consumed on the Bitcoin network has been rising dramatically. But as you can see, started peaking in January 18, July 2018, around that 75 terawatt hours um, per year mark. And since then, up until January 2021, has barely increased at all, just an annual compound rate of a couple percent per year there. Um, so the pollution of the network has almost been flat for the past three years. That's right. The pollution of Bitcoin's network has been flat for three years, or the energy consumption of Bitcoin's network has been flat for the past three years. So if you assume that we can go to more and more renewable sources of energy, then the actual pollution of the Bitcoin network could be even decreasing since 2018. But yet in that time, Bitcoin has totally soared and taken off. So how can the pollution of Bitcoin be going down if the network is growing and, and growing in adoption? This is a chart of Bitcoin's confirmed transactions per day. So as you can see, this hit a peak right there in around 2018 of about 300,000 per day. And since then, it hasn't gone much above $300,000 or 300,000 transactions per day. So Bitcoin, the amount of transactions on the network are not increasing. And if you think about it, this is why the energy usage is not increasing because the reason why Bitcoin's network consumes so much energy is because every time I send Bitcoin to another person, they have to use those miners to use a bunch of energy to run those hashing algorithms to validate that transaction. But if there's those transactions, there's only the same amount every day, then we're only going to pollute that same amount. So the pollution of the network is directly tied to the amount of con confirmed transactions on chain. The reason why the transactions are not rising, but Bitcoin's growing is, be, um, and as you can see, the estimated transaction value on the network here is skyrocketing to tens of billions of dollars per day, or at least over $10 billion. There's a lot of different ways to calculate this, but no matter how you slice it, it's very clear the amount of capital moved on the network of Bitcoin is skyrocketing. So how do we have transactions flat, pollution flat, but value skyrocketing? Well, here's the missing component, average transaction value. Every single time we're doing that on-train transaction, now what used to be, you know, a couple thousand dollars is now a couple hundred thousand dollars. So that same amount of pollution and energy that used to just move four thousand dollars is now moving four hundred thousand dollars. So as you can see, Bitcoin in the past couple of years has almost gotten a hundred x more efficient per dollar moved on the network. That's right, a ninety-nine percent decrease in energy consumption per dollar moved on the Bitcoin network in the past few years because that average transaction value has gone up a hundred. So this is the trend that is, to me, the academic data of showing why we can actually have Bitcoin as a global currency, because what I believe needs to happen is we need to have layer two solutions. I mean, you know, having ships that move gold and, you know, settlement papers across the world to different central banks is not efficient for you buying a cup of coffee, but that's the settlement layer of the financial system. So Bitcoin's main blockchain will be the settlement layer for the global financial system. On top of that, we can build layer two solutions for faster, maybe a little bit less secure, but way quicker quicker, way cheaper, way more sustainable transactions for, let's say, buying a cup of coffee or doing something a little bit simpler. Just this whole idea of off-chain transactions, um, of, you know, uh, what Ethereum is doing to move to scale their network with proof of stake. There's lots of ways in the long run that Bitcoin could potentially uh, figure out how to scale here. But I think the biggest trend is that we can keep the transactions at the network at around three or 400,000 per day and just keep moving that average transaction value up to millions per day. And then soon tens of millions of dollars of fiat per day that actually happen on the main chain. So this is the data that I just wanted to show with this video is that, you know, Tesla actually by building all these batteries and solar panels eventually will create a big enough energy infrastructure to potentially power the whole of Bitcoin network. And that's why I think it's so important that we invest in renewable energy because humans are not going to stop relying on energy. I mean, go to any town you live in, look how many banks there are, look at all the lights they have on, look at all the paper they print, look at all the ATMs, look at all the money that uses, look at all the people employed by those banks, not doing anything except polluting inside the bank. Look how much fraud 
frustration and pain the banking system causes. Look how unaccessible it is. Look how hard it is to move money overseas. There's massive friction and pain and pollution associated with the legacy banking system that must be comped to Bitcoin. So it's not just like Bitcoin's polluting out of nowhere and it's it's versus zero pollution. It's like you were moving hundreds of billions of dollars on the Bitcoin network that we didn't have to move this old way that would have also polluted. So um, this is truly, and I don't think the jury's been out on this. I think there is a way where Bitcoin goes rogue and, you know, somehow coal becomes the by far cheapest way of energy in the future. And the network incentivizes this massive energy consumption of really dirty uh, fuels and that ruins the planet. There is a weird dystopian potential for that. But what I truly see happening is innovations in sustainable energy, m meaning that even if Bitcoin uses increasing amounts of energy, that energy will be increasingly renewable mix, therefore decreasing the pollution of that energy. And this trend of increasing average transaction value is undeniable. This is what every single Bitcoin, you know, energy skeptic needs to try and wrap their head around is the stagnation fallacy. If you crunch the numbers, I'll give you the fact that if the average transaction value stays flat, then the network can't really scale um, or, or, or it'll just be forced to pollute more. But if the average transaction value goes up another 10x, then we can, you know, limit our pollution but Bitcoin can go up another 10x, which is just what happened in the past three years. So um, this is what I would say to all the energy skeptics. Just a couple years ago, you know, we were watching this chart and everyone's saying, oh, if Bitcoin keeps going at its current rate and actually takes off, it's going to use the entire world's amount of energy. Well, guess what? Fast forward three years, Bitcoin's worth a trill. That didn't happen. The energy actually stayed flat. So those are the facts. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. This is a fascinating debate that I keep on covering on the channel um, and I just want to learn more about. So please let me know if you have any info in the comments below. See y'all next time. This is HyperChange. Peace.